May the Lord give you power to be excellent. May the Spirit of God give all of the believers power to be excellent. This is your brother, David Williams with Jesus Ministries. And what's your worth? What is the basis of your value? You need to understand that. You need to evaluate what makes you valuable. You need to evaluate what makes you valuable. What makes you valuable? What makes you valuable? So, I am talking to those of you who want to rest in peace. You want to sleep in peace. When you leave planet Earth, you want to... When you physically die and your spirit leaves that body, you want assurance that you are going to a place of pleasure and prosperity where God the Father is. That's what you want to make sure of. So I am talking to those of you who want to spend forever with Jesus Christ, with Almighty God. If you want to spend forever with Almighty God, you've got to answer this question. You've got to know the answer to this question. What's the question, Brother David? It's in the description. The question is, what is your worth? What makes you valuable? What makes you valuable? Now, Jesus said a man's life consists not in the abundance of the thing that he possesses. So Jesus says it's not the amount of money that you have that makes you valuable. Now, money does benefit you while you are in that body. But since you know you're going to put it down, physical beauty makes you valuable. But you know it breaks down to the point of death. Intellect makes you valuable. But temporarily, it's going to break down. So your intellect, eventually, your brain is going to stop functioning. You say, well, I want to be valuable up to that point. If you want to be valuable up to that point, after that, you will lose value. Now, you say, well, others will speak of me. They'll speak of how wise I was. They'll speak of how knowledge or how knowledgeable. They'll speak of how skilled I was. What I, what I do will remain after I'm gone. But you won't enjoy it because you'll be in a place of eternal torment. So, what makes you valuable? What makes you of any worth? Now, Jesus puts it like this in Matthew chapter 5. He says, let your light so shine in the presence of others so that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So, believers have a Father in heaven who tells them things and gives them power and who loves them. Believers in Jesus Christ, followers of Jesus Christ, those who are obedient to Father God through Jesus, who do what Jesus says, they are ever increasing in worth before God and before people. So people are designed to appreciate, to value you, to say yes to you, to promote you, to accept you as you grow in value. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse 35 it says this, Proverbs 3:35 says the wise will inherit glory, but the fear of God is the basis for wisdom. So knowing that God blesses me if I obey his voice and throws me away if I ignore him, that's the basis for making good decisions because God is in control of the outcome of my decisions. You know no matter how much money you make, God is in control of how that money is spent. That's what Proverbs reveals. The Holy Spirit spoke that through Solomon in the Proverbs. It says that you it says it, that the the receiving of 
wages and it uses a different phrase it says they that the the casting of the lot into the lap basically that you can get what you want you can get what you get you can you can earn what you want to earn but the dispersing of it is of the lord verse 33 of of proverbs 16 the lot is cast into the lap it's talking about the stuff that you acquire so yes, you're going to acquire some things. The lot is cast into the lap. But the whole disposing of it is of the Lord. So that means you don't even control. You try to. You don't even control where your resources are going. You get it. And it has to go there. It has to go there. It has to go there. And those are the things that you actually figure out. But the Holy Spirit has spoken to us extensively in his word concerning what makes you worth anything to God and to people you are supposed to be valuable to God and to people so Jesus says your light makes you valuable your light arise and shine for your light has come what makes you worth something to God what makes you worth something to others? You have to evaluate. You have to evaluate. You have to quantify, figure out, calculate. You've got to know what makes you valuable. What makes me worthwhile? What makes me valuable? You better know. You better know. When we ask questions like, what gives me purpose? That's what we're essentially asking. When you ask questions about your purpose, that's what you're asking. When you ask about your purpose, you are asking about value. There is no value outside of purpose. There is no worth outside of purpose. Could you imagine somebody from a nation where technology is unavailable on large scales? Do you, do you, do you think that they would be able to figure out what this is? Someone who is living in an area where they don't have technology. I could not sell this. This would have no value to a person who does not utilize the machinery associated with this. They wouldn't know what to do with it. So it would lose value. It was lo it would lose value. So, if people don't know what you are, if people don't know what you are, it's hard for them to appreciate, to enjoy you, to utilize you. Do you know that you're supposed to be utilized? As you grow, as you grow, as but, but what are you growing into? You are supposed to be utilized. Where are you going? So purpose is directly attached to worth. Purpose is directly associated, directly attached to worth. If I don't know what I am supposed to be, I'm going to lose value. And if I enjoy my physique, if I focus on my my materials, my possessions, if I focus on my intellect, that's all temporarily used by me. I'm not going to keep it. And when I go, I'm going to stand before God. So I can't take what I do here if I know my mind is temporary. I know my body is temporary. I know my possessions are under my influence temporarily. Are you an animal? Are you an, a, a, a brute animal? Are you an ignorant animal? If, you're, if you understand the value that you have, then you've got to... To know that God is going to judge you, blessing or curse. He's going to treat you a certain way in this life. 
by the impact, by the purpose you fulfill, by the responsibilities. We were talking yesterday evening about what it means to have a responsibility. It describes responding to the given, the God-given expectations on your life. Do you understand that fulfilling your purpose is about knowing and obeying God and his expectations? Because that's what Jesus describes as light. Now, I want to give you three things that give you value. I want to give you three things that reveal the presence of God in your life. At least three things that express the presence of God in your life. Number one is your knowledge of the future. Your ability to foresee. The Spirit of God will show you things to come. And then we have the second thing, which is insight. Your understanding of life. Your understanding of life. Uh, there is, There are many scriptures in the Word of God that reveal how valuable a wise person is. A wise people are valuable. They are worth a lot. Okay, <clears throat> so a wise person is very beneficial. What makes me wise? I understand how things work. And so wisdom is prophetic in its operation. That means we make decisions today. We make calculations today that benefit us in the future. We make we make decisions that prosper ourselves and that prosper others. That's, that's what it means. Proverbs 17, 8 says, A gift is, a, is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that has it. A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that has it. Wherever it turns, it prospers. Now, that's a very, very significant a precious truth right there it's a precious truth a gift is as a precious stone a valuable rare stone in the hand of the person who has it or actually in the eyes in the eyes of him that has it wherever it turns it prospers so this term gift is talking about that which you've received. Let's focus on the spiritual aspect of that. Let's 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 not try to figure out what they're talking about if he's referring to something material because the word of God is a spiritual book. It applies to the natural affairs of man, the natural matters. But there's a higher truth to it that that's right in front of us, especially as New Testament people. As New Testament people, the spirit of God is telling us things. So what that means is that I can look at this right here and I can see the spiritual truth behind what this is saying. And so as the Spirit of God says, a gift is like a precious stone to your eyes. So I, I, I see what God has given me to be, what God has created me to be. I see it. I understand it. And... As I apply the gift on my life, it's prospering me. You know what prosperity is? The acquisition. I am getting things. I am getting things that benefit me and others. So I am acquiring things. Things are occurring in my life that benefit me and that benefit others. And since there is a God... And, and, and we've got to have the right order of this. So there are three specific things that make you valuable. Number one is your gift to see the future. Number two, and we'll talk about that a bit more. 
So your ability to spiritually know what is going to happen with accuracy, because we don't need predictions and guessing. That's not going to ultimately benefit anybody because you might guess four months into the future and the fifth month erase everything that you guessed between now and four months from now. My point is that we've got to hear the voice of God. That's what makes life livable. That's what makes it tolerable. Okay, we're not evil people. We're not going to go, go and get drunk to escape life. We're not going to go and practice some crazy kind of Easter meditation in order to escape life. We're not going to find ways to alleviate stress in order to escape life. The Spirit of God doesn't want us to be attempting to escape life. We have to live it successfully. And there is a path to success. The Lord tells Joshua about how to obtain, how to acquire, how to experience good success. God tells Joshua that this, if you do what I, the living God, tell you to do, don't simply try to follow principles and laws because you don't know what they mean or how to apply them. Because God reveals things to those who serve him. He reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So those who understand. So we, we, we grow not because we know things. We, growth is a gift. It doesn't matter who convinces you of what. It doesn't matter who makes you feel confident. The word of God says the fool rages and is confident. So it's referring to the fact that not every confident person, that most confident people that you're going to meet, they are not in control. They are pretending. And if you spend time conversing with people, you'll discover that they are pretending to be strong. They've got fig leaves. They're pretending to be strong. They're actually subordinate to their environment and to their world. They are controlled by the expectations of the structure under which they are subordinate. That's not what the Lord Jesus calls you to. He calls you to freedom. He calls you to understanding what's actually going on. He wants to talk to you. And so he talks to the faithful. It doesn't matter what the unfaithful figure out. It won't benefit them. It's not because f figuring things out is for the purpose of success. And since success is a gift from God, since success is a gift, he blesses people. Success is descriptive of experiences that are beneficial after having applied some truth. But what happens when you do right things and get wrong results? And what's going to happen at the end of your physical life when it's time to die? The Lord told this man in Luke chapter 12, this person was trying to work and to amass his wealth for the sake of retirement. And the Lord called him a fool. He said, oh fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Powerful statement. I forget where it is. I forget where it is. I think it's in Job. I think it's in Job. Uh, maybe, no, no, no. Maybe it's, no, no, it's not in Job. It's not in Job. Powerful statement, brothers. I need you. Because Jesus said you can't serve two masters. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve money. You can't serve physical health. You can't serve uh, information. He, 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 this is what Jesus said that very plainly. So he wants to bless us. By ch changing our way of thinking. L listen to what this says. In Jeremiah 17. This is in Jeremiah 17. Here we go. Verse 11. Jeremiah 17. 11, please. Jeremiah 17. 11 is communicating a truth that is one of the most valuable explanations of life in all of God's word. It's found elsewhere, but it's clearly described here in verse 17. It says this, As the partridge sits on eggs and hatches them not, 
So he that gets riches and not by right or righteousness, as a partridge sits on eggs and doesn't hatch them, so he that gets riches and not by right will leave them in the midst of his days, and at his end will be a fool. He that gets riches and doesn't receive it as a result of doing what was right. Now, who determines right from wrong? Does culture determine that? Nature is the structure, and it came from Father God. So nature has laws. People are a part of nature. So people don't control the laws. All they can do is apply them. If you know what law you're applying, and all of the laws that you are applying as you're attempting to get that done right there, be that right there, if you actually know what's going on, and how can I know what's going on? I've got to know who's going on. I've got to know what the Spirit of God is doing. So once I know who God is, once the Lord has revealed himself to me, and he will reveal himself to you through Jesus Christ more and more and more and more and more, because Jesus is in control of everything his Father has. He made that very, very clear. So Jesus is in control of everything the Father has. Uh, all things were created by Jesus for the father for also the son so the father's got this structure and jesus is the 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 manager of that structure and that's what he's doing he's managing life he's managing existence he's managing spiritual and physical matter he's managing it all he's created it all and he is the and he is the governor of it all okay that stated success Good results are a gift because God favors you and he identifies you as valuable first and foremost to him. I can't seek value primarily for selfish reasons. If the spirit of God says, David, your number one ambition for value is self uh, uh, satisfaction, he'll withhold true value from me he'll withhold eternal value from me he won't talk to me he won't allow me to understand what i'm supposed to be doing for longevity for eternal excellence now if you want to be a dog and you just want to live this life and then die and go to a place of eternal punishment well then you can do that but if you want to be a man which includes the women, if you want to be mighty, if you want to operate in the real value of God, why do you think you can rationalize things so differently from an iguana, from a bird, from a tree? Why do you think you have the excellence that you have? There's a purpose for your life that you've got to acquire, you've got to ascend to, you've got to receive you've got to inherit you've got to gain you've got to i think there's a word i don't know it i don't use it often enough to know it but to acquiesce to 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 us to, to i think the word acquiesce applies here to 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 go higher to achieve a status to come into the fullness of what God created you to be. We invest in our children because of the potential of what they have to be. That's why we invest in our kids. Why do you spend time talking to your kids? Because you love them. Why do you love them? You were built to love them. You're built to love them because it is requ they require your care, your comfort, your, your, your good treatment your communication, your expressions of affection, your instruction, your example, they require that in order for them to be fully functional according to the creative design, according to their creative design. So the Spirit of God designed man to be invested into by man. So God invests in you and people invest in you in order for you to be who the Spirit of God wants you to be. So, 
doing what I'm supposed to do is what's going to position me to express the value God has given to me. So God gives value as he gives gifts. So as the Spirit of God gifts you, strengthens you, equips you more and more, you are a greater benefit to him and you're a greater benefit to people around you. And there are three things that benefit you, num that benefit well, it benefits you, but it benefits God and you. Number one is your knowledge of the future by the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God tells people, young and old, boys and girls, about the future with accuracy. He doesn't tell everybody everything, but he tells people, he tells people in this very day what's going to happen. He speaks to them in visions. He speaks to them in dreams. And they know it's the voice of God, A, because we are built to know, and B, because the things we foresee occur. Our lives become structured to know we are in the hands of Almighty God. We are in the hands of Jesus Christ. He is controlling what's happening around us. The higher you go in God, the more you begin to recognize that God is controlling what is happening. Because the higher you go, the more, A, you see what he's doing. And B, you experience a greater measure of his activity in your life. That's what makes the Bible such a valuable, such, an, such a, a, a necessary record of writings. It explains to us in perfect detail how God works with man and how much he's involved in the lives of those who are dedicated to him. It also reveals how he treats those who dismiss him and who try to establish value apart from him. The word of God says in Isaiah, he makes diviners or people who are trying to gain knowledge of life from the spiritual practices available in this life because there are various kinds of laws that you can apply to acquire things. You can apply the laws of God or you can apply laws that the demons teach because you know demons teach things and men can hear from demons. So the Spirit of God talks to man. He speaks through visions. He speaks through dreams. Okay? All right, we are talking about the Spirit of God entering or communicating with you through some image, either A, because it enters the material world or takes on it. <coughs> the Spirit of God, whether it be through an angel or his very Holy Spirit, will show you an image. It'll just occur before your eyes as though you're asleep, but you're not. Whether you're awake or whether you're asleep, the Holy Ghost will show you some things about the future. Or he'll show you, a, he'll show you what's happening around you or what potentially, what potentially can happen. He'll tell you all kinds of things. And he speaks with increasing frequency. When you follow and obey his voice, he speaks more readily. More and more and more and more and more and more and more. You go further and further and further and further and further and further and further. Now, it is true that if we don't live according to his will, he'll allow us to be confused when it comes to what we're hearing. Because God is not the only one talking to us. There are demon spirits, I've said that before, that are also trying to get your attention. And then there's your human heart that's also perceiving calculating and attempting to assess life so your own mind your own imaginations you you have thoughts you have desires and those things are materialized they materialize you've got beliefs you've got ambitions and they come before your face they enter your mind in in, in, in various forms of communication, images or sensations. All right. So we hear that. We feel that. 
we feel it, we, 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 we hear it, we see it. And, and so self is talking, spirits around us are talking, okay? People who are controlled by self or spirits are talking, and then the spirit of God is talking. And we've got to be able to hear him through the midst of all of these occurrences, all of these voices, because if we hear the voice of God and obey, then we're talking about good success. Then we're talking about <clears throat> development. Then we're talking about prosperity, good prosperity, eternal prosperity, true value, true value. We've got to overcome the deception of our society because one of the things the devil through society and by the spirits around us are trying to do is they're trying to confuse us concerning worth and value. The enemy is trying to make us value temporal living. But if we value, if our value is in temporal things, we're not going to spend eternity with God. And proof that we're not going to spend eternity with God is going to occur in this temporal life. Proof you are going to spend eternity with God becomes evident in this life progressively, increasingly. The fact that you're going to spend forever with God becomes evident in this realm. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. When you read the Bible, we are not reading about people's lives after their death. There's some people that we are shown some things concerning that. We are reading people's lives here on earth. You're reading about Abraham's life when he was here. Isaac, when he was here. Jacob, Joseph, when they were Daniel, when they were here, Zechariah, when he was here, okay, Elizabeth, when she was here, Peter, James, John, when they were here, you're reading about what their lives entailed while on earth. So the Holy Ghost is the Holy Ghost is saying, listen, you're going to know them by what they produce, and you're going to know them by how I treat them. God treats people. He responds to people. He manages people's lives a certain way. He lets certain things occur in order to communicate who he is, what he's about, what his work is. And that's why God doesn't want the sons to be disobedient. Because when people of God are disobedient and God has to punish us, it confuses the people around us as to whether there is a God because if the godly people become ungodly they begin to disobey and God has to punish them then the people who are ordained to scrutinize you to figure out if you are a resource if you are a blessing they'll see your suffering because of your sin and they'll think that life is random people are not supposed to think that life doesn't operate under law. People need to see the procedures, the, the processes, the systems of the lives of the godly. People need to be able to look at people's lives and follow where their lives are going because the Spirit of God is speaking through people's lives. He's speaking through the lives of David. He's speaking through the lives of Sol the life of Solomon. He's speaking through people's lives. The Spirit of God is speaking through the lives of these people. He's speaking through Esther's life. He's speaking through Paul's life. He wants people to see three things. He wants them to see their view of the future. He wants them to see their understanding of now. And the third thing he wants them to see is power. He wants people to see that when Isaac, because of Isaac's dedication to God Almighty, the Spirit of God kept blessing him materialistically or materially. He kept enabling him to discover wells of water that would sustain 
his whole entourage, his family, the people he governed. Isaac was a chieftain. He was the head of a family group, and he had many servants. He had many servants. He had many animals. And the Lord was prospering him, but he needed resources to sustain his wealth. The word of God says that a strong man retains riches. It says a strong man retains riches and a gracious woman retains honor. A gracious woman retains honor and a strong man retains riches. So the Lord wants to show that he is with people. He wants to reveal himself through people who are hearing his voice. So, because he wants to reveal himself through your life, the fact that he can do that with distinction and clarity is what makes you valuable to him. What makes me valuable to God? The fact that people can see Jesus through your life. They may not like Jesus, but they can see him through you. They can see that though they don't like him, they are watching him through you, which might draw harassment. But at least it's Jesus. There are people in my life right now, praise God they're not in my life, but they are part of life for me. They would love me. They, they, because the Lord has enabled me to be a nice guy. Brother Dave is a nice guy. I'm not going to steal from you. I'm not going to lie on you, generally speaking. <clears throat> Unless I'm afraid and I might lie on you. Of course, I'm talking about the unsaved David. I'm a nice guy, generally speaking. I'm a nice guy. No one's going to tell you, oh, David owes me money. You know, no one's going to say, oh, David owes me money. No one's going to say, oh, David's a bad guy. So people... I, I'm a nice guy. The Lord enabled me to be a nice guy. My only enemies in life are those who are not happy that I act like Jesus because he tells me to. I, I appreciate the, 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 the ability to act like Jesus. It's a gift to say no to me and to say yes to Jesus. It's a gift. My point is the Spirit of God so yes, he made me a gentle person and a kind person, but I still have enemies. When I walk into the Walmart, I have to prepare myself to see enemies. I gotta prepare myself. When I'm at Walmart, I gotta get ready. Okay, I might see this guy, I might see this woman, I might see this person, and they don't like me. Why don't they like you, David? Because I have to obey Jesus. And I had to tell them that they were doing things that the Spirit of God didn't want them to do. Other than that, I don't have enemies. What's my point? If people don't like you because you have to obey Jesus, that's a benefit to you. But for the most part, you are going to be valuable, A, because the Spirit of God is showing you things that are going to happen. Number one, people should know that you know what's going on. People should know that if something is going on, you know about it. If something is going to occur, you know about it. People should know that. So number one, the first thing that gives you value is the fact that you have an accurate perspective of the future and it came from God, a dream, a vision, audible voice from the Lord or what you've read in the Bible oh well, yeah well the Bible says this is gonna happen the Bible says that's gonna happen and you're able to speak that word in season you're not going to say that something's going to happen that God didn't say because that costs you value if you say that something is going to occur that doesn't occur you'll lose value because you're not directing people to safety People will value you. They'll, so, so, your description, your explanation of the future makes you valuable. Number one, to God, because God wants to talk to people. 
and guess what he wants to talk to people through you and if he can't talk to people through you you have lost value with him and you've lost value with them even if they like you I like you you don't like me you you think you like me but I'm an obstacle in the world they'll tell you if you are not a part of the solution you are part of the problem so if I can't be a blessing to this person they might like me but I'm really just a ball and chain I'm really just a, a heavy backpack with full of rocks I'm really I'm worthless to this person people like worthless people because they're confused but that doesn't make you okay. The Holy Spirit wants to speak through you. He wants to tell people what's about to happen so that they can prepare themselves by going to God for the necessary protection and understanding and relationship with Him. So, if God, if you are, there's a scripture here. Uh, in listen to this verse right here listen to this verse this is this is verse mm, 3 Proverbs 14 3 in the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride so when a person doesn't know what he's talking about but yet he's talking he's ruining people's lives by positioning them to pay attention to something that's not going to benefit them. Oh, you're talking, but you're not saying anything of value, but you are talking. So when I use my brain to absorb what you're saying, I'm wasting my brain because you're talking and you're not saying anything. Okay, so pride is a, dis it describes a false belief it seems strong but it's not that's pride the rod of pride the rod talks about control hey if that person's a fool what he's saying is pride talking and it's affecting people's lives pride through that guy's mouth is affecting people's lives but what else does it say but the lips of the wise will preserve, protect, defend them. So when the Spirit of God gives you knowledge and wisdom, knowledge of what's to come, and wisdom of what's going on, when the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom, when he gives you understanding of what's happening in your world, and people can go to you and find comprehension, find wisdom, find safety when they can when they can see the future through your words that's beneficial to them that's beneficial to God and if you are a blessing if you are worth if 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 the spirit of God is working through your life to give people an accurate view of him to give people an accurate view of the future, to give people an accurate understanding of right now. If people can rely on you to get to God and to prepare themselves for the day-to-day -day exercises and responsibilities, then they're going to appreciate you. It doesn't matter that you're physically strong or beautiful or you've got skills in this life, all that pertain to this life. You started a company, you got me a job. Well, fine, that's good, but eventually I'm going to die. How are you really helping me? You do, you're a good painter. You painted something, I bought it, and I put it on my wall. I bought it for $1,000. Money fades, beauty fades, information in a person's mind you die we die so that's not real value that's not real worth that's not what makes you valuable if you don't have value in the eyes of God and man God's not going to protect you men are not going to protect you everything you have is going to be taken from you in an abrupt way you're going to suffer as you live. You're going to suffer as you live. 
So the Holy Spirit wants us to know that our value is number one in our ability to foresee what God is going to do. The fact that God talks to you about what he himself is going to do, that makes you valuable. The second thing that makes you valuable is the fact that he explains to you what is going on around you with accuracy. And because you understand what's going on around you, because you understand the principles and the laws of existence, you can apply them and you can give advice about them. And the advice is accurate. It's actually affecting people in a real way. And the third thing is the power of the Spirit of God. People came to Jesus for the removing of demons. Do you know that listening to demons positions them to enter you? If you listen to evil spirits through people, then the evil spirits operating in those people that are in your area, you are giving them access to you. You are giving them place within you. You are opening yourself to evil spirits that are in your environment. They are allowed to enter your soul because they are in your world to destroy you, but you've got to say yes to them through certain activities, certain decisions you make. So the word of God tells us to resist the devil. If I am listening to people who have demons and I am entertained or I let them inform me, I am exposing myself to the influence they are under. Jesus said very clearly that if you receive him, you're receiving the one who sent him. Jesus said if they receive you, talking to his disciples, he said if they listen to you, it's because they're listening to me. And if they listen to me, they're listening to the one that sent me. So guess what? Jesus sends people and the devil sends people. And so in, you enjoy communication that comes from the devil because the people don't listen to Jesus. They listen to the voices in their head. They listen to their own desires. People want to be entertained. They want to be satisfied, pleased by their actions, by their dances, by their singing. Yeah, listen to that guy. He's a music maker. Listen to him. What influence is he under? Because whatever he is under, he's mixing his skills with his pride, his rebellion, his rejection of God. That journalist, he's mixing his information with his fear, his lust, his pride. That actress is, mi is mixing her physical beauty and control over her body to transmit a message that isn't getting me to think about life as I'm supposed to see it. So these are liars. And if you listen to a liar, it's because you are a liar. And if you're in the spirits are going to fill you and they're going to change your thinking. They're going to warp your mind. And you're not going to be able to make decisions that ultimately benefit you. People are looking for protection, but God's not going to protect people who forsake their responsibilities because you're supposed to be radiant. You're supposed to shine. You're supposed to glow with the power and knowledge of God. People should be able to come to you for healing, for knowledge, for wisdom, for the pure love of God. They should be able to come to you for that. You should be ever increasing in the knowledge, love, the power, the wisdom, the generosity of Almighty God. People should know that you are connected to Jesus Christ. He's the Savior of the world. Can they interact with you and interact with the Savior? If people are interacting with you, if they're talking with you, if they are communing with you, are they communicating with Jesus? If not, what then? What then? Is it your intellect? Is it your beauty? Is it your strength? Is it your skill? Is it your materials? What is it? What is it that people are getting when they interact with you? 
Are you a temporary person? Will you only be valuable until you physically die? Or are you developing your eternal worth? Because people will bless you in this world if they come and interact with you and they know they're benefiting eternally from this interaction. People know that there's a God, whether they, whether they dismiss him or not. And when they interact with you, can God communicate through you? Prophecy, wisdom, and the miraculous. People came to Jesus for healing. They came to Jesus for the removing of demon spirits. They came to Jesus for miracles to be worked. They put their lives in this man's hand and he made their lives better. That's how they knew that he was from God. And it didn't matter that people hated him. Because we are not afraid of our enemies. We don't have to be afraid of sickness and disease and war and famine and violence and hatred of others. As long as we are worth something to God. Jesus said, if you lose your focus on Jesus, on the Father, on the words of the Father, if you don't do what you are supposed to be doing, Jesus said, you lose value. He said, you are good for nothing. Like, okay, well, I can't use you for anything. The Lord Jesus made that very clear in Matthew 5 and Matthew and, and John 15. If the salt loses its flavor, its taste, what are you going to use it for? He says, what is he going to use you for? If he can't, if you listen to liars, people who entertain you, who you think know things, but yet they're not getting you to think about Jesus. Brother Dave does not watch the news. In case you did not already know, Brother Dave does not watch the news. They have an inaccurate view of what's going on. Uh -oh. That's the best way, and by best, I mean most impactful. The news, not almost, almost, I think so. The news is one of the secular news media, alternative, mainstream. That's the easiest way for a child of God to lose his ability to hear from God because they're not speaking from God's perspective. They are not speaking from God's perspective. So God's not going to continue to give me clarity about the future. And I'm listening to people who don't want to follow him, but who want safety and prosperity. Wait, wait, wait. So you want peace and prosperity. So you observe the world. Your perspective of what's going on, you're going to reiterate it. Information carries perspective. So when they tell you stuff, they pick and choose what to tell you based on their understanding. And they understand things based on God's desire to talk to them. They don't want to talk to him. So guess what? He doesn't talk to them. And he leaves them to misconstrue the events of their day. They don't know. They don't know. They cannot foresee so when they tell you things they can only tell you bits and pieces of what is the spirit of god is telling the people of god about the future and he's giving us insight the holy ghost will tell you in your prayer time what's happening whether that's something that you should worry about or confront the last hurricane we had in south florida the lord told me about it he simply used the phrase destroying winds destroying winds w-i-n-d-s destroying winds and so when it was time for us to board up for the hurricane i boarded up i boarded up for the hurricane david why'd you board up because the lord told me the hurricane was coming so i figured since he wanted to tell me it was something that i should prepare for and i did i prepared for it and it came through after that last year oh it's a hurricane it's gonna kill everybody the hurricane is going to kill everybody. It's a category 20. The hurricane didn't come. It just, this is the state. Let's see. There it is. That's the state. And the hurricane just went. 
somewhere else. I don't even know where it went. And then the year before that, the hurricane, I live right here. So I live right here in the state of Florida. Florida shit like this. Florida shit like this. I'm not going to draw it for you. Florida shit like this. I live right here. Oh, it's a hurricane. It's, it's category 17. It's horrible. It's going to kill everybody. I'm right here. The hurricane did this. Went under the state and passed above the county I'm in. It hit the county south of us. It hit the county south of that. And then it passed back through. The hurricane came through and went that way. I'm right here. I was right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. Hurricane came under and went through the state. It went through the middle of the state. Listen, brothers. <laughs> we get ready when the Holy Ghost says get ready. And Jesus is not talking about it. Guess what? We're not talking about it. We're not thinking about it. Oh, he didn't. He's not talking about that. Master, master, we perish. Wake up. Why are you guys afraid? Oh, you want me to calm the wind down? The wind is making you afraid? Wind, calm down. Waves, calm down. You guys need more faith. You need more faith. I told the guys that you need more faith. When you are a son of God, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So when you subject yourself to many voices, God's going to limit what he says to you. And you're going to confuse what he's saying because you are submissive to a variety of communication. And if people cannot come to you or watch you and see their savior, you've lost value. And if you lose value, you're going to lose protection and you're going to lose prosperity in this life and ultimately in the life to come. This is David Williams with Jesus Ministry. He's coming back. Let's prepare ourselves accordingly.